When I logged onto the internet this morning, I noticed that Affinity released a new version of Affinity Photo. So the new version is 1.9.0, and I read through the release notes on it, and it said there's a new benchmarking utility built into Affinity Photo. So I thought it would be interesting to run the benchmark on a number of my different Macs. So first I'll go over how you do this. So once you open up Affinity Photo, you go to Help, and then you go to Benchmark, and you just hit Run Benchmark and this will give us some values here. So I ran this on four different computers. I ran it on my 2009 iMac, my 2012 MacBook Pro, my 2015 MacBook Pro, and my 2020 Mac Mini with the M1 processor. So I wanted to do this benchmark so if someone has an older computer, like a 2012 MacBook Pro, they might want to see how much performance gain they might get with Affinity Photo by upgrading to a newer computer. And if you have a really old computer like a 2009 iMac, well, as we'll see in a minute, you'll see a big boost. Okay, that's finished. It doesn't beep or anything. You can tell it's done when it says run benchmark again at the bottom. So I'll close out of this. So I ran this on each machine four times each and then averaged the scores. So I want to look at a couple of these here. So this is the Mac Mini. And then we'll pull up the iMac. So the iMac didn't turn white and it didn't finish all of these. So I don't know exactly why that's the case, but you can see a difference here on the Mac Mini M1 is that it's using Metal and the iMac is not. And Metal is Apple's graphics software or something. It works with the hardware, so it's accelerated, it's very fast. And then if I look up the, let's see, 2015 MacBook Pro, that is also using Metal. And we'll look at the 2012 and that's using Metal. So the 2009 iMac has a Core 2 Duo processor, and the others all have Core i5s except for the newer Mac, which has the M1 processor. So I put these all in a spreadsheet, I'll open that up. And these are the average scores for each one. And it's kind of hard to tell how much faster the Mac Mini M1 is on this first with the Vector single CPU. But if you look at the numbers here, you have 123 to 188 for the older Macs, and the new one almost hits 500. So I found it pretty interesting how fast the 2009 iMac was compared to the say 2015 MacBook Pro. I mean, certainly the 2015 MacBook Pro is faster, but the iMac is in the same ballpark, I would say. I should also state that the 2009 iMac and the 2015 MacBook Pro have eight gigabytes of RAM each, and the 2012 MacBook Pro and the 2020 Mac Mini have 16 gigabytes of RAM. So now when we go to the Vector Multi-CPU, you can see there's a big jump for the Mac Mini with M1. So the ranges for the Intel processors are 264, to 437, and the M1 processor is 2048. So you're looking at around five times faster than the fastest MacBook Pro that I had. Now, some people like to compare these with the most recent generation of the Intel processor in the Mac, and I don't have any of those. I know there are a lot of people that were like me that have an older Mac and they want to know if it's time to upgrade. If I had just purchased an Intel Mac, last year, I don't know that I would have upgraded to the Mac Mini with M1 processor. But one of the reasons I upgraded is because there was a big jump from the Intel Macs that I had that were, you know, five years old. If we look at raster here, again, we have looks like a five times jump here between the fastest Intel that I have. And that's for multi-CPU and then single CPU. There's a pretty big jump here between the 2012 MacBook Pro and the 2015 MacBook Pro. I mean, you have 340 to 1600. But then when you go to the Mac Mini M1, you have 6,857. So let's do a calculation here. I'm in a spreadsheet. I guess I could do it right there. But So that's 20 times faster than the 2012 MacBook Pro for single CPU raster. That's pretty impressive. The second to last column here, we have the combined single CPU. And I'm not exactly sure what all these benchmarks are. But the Mac Mini M1, five times faster. And then the last one, we have the combined single GPU. And here you have a huge jump between the MacBook Pros and the Mac Mini M1. So the 2015 MacBook Pro is about five times faster than the 2012 MacBook Pro. And the Mac Mini M1 is about five times faster than the 2015 MacBook Pro. So I think this is a good example of the performance you can get with Apple Silicon native software. And Affinity has updated their software. I think it was on day one of the M1 processor being released or at least soon after. They've had optimized versions. And there's a huge performance increase here over the previous generations of Intel processor. Now granted, if you had a newer Intel processor, you'd probably see higher numbers here. But along with these high numbers on the Mac Mini M1 processor is it takes very little energy. It, it doesn't heat up at all to run. It's very efficient. So I thought that was an interesting little benchmark. If you're interested in some photo editing software, I would check out Affinity Photo. And I also use Affinity Designer. You pay once in the Apple App Store and then you're done. You don't have to pay monthly for it. And it also has family sharing. So if you have multiple Macs on the family sharing account, you can share it between all those computers. I mean, I installed it on four different Macs here. 
although I don't regularly use it on those and I'm probably going to delete it on the old iMac. I don't really need it on there. But it's nice because I use these different computers. I'm the only user of these computers and I can go back and forth with them and use this software. I don't have to like copy things between computers to do edits and such. I really like that aspect of it. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.